Welcome to Ms. Gillum's tutorial videos. Um, today we're going to be looking at creating equivalent fractions. So let's get started. So before we even start talking exactly how to solve for equivalent fractions, let's take a step back and talk about what does the word equivalent actually mean. So if you notice in the word, you can see that equal is actually in the word. So if two things are equivalent to each other, they are equal in value. They may not look exactly the same, but they are equal in value. For example, you could say two times three is equivalent to four plus two because they both equal six. They're equivalent to one another. You could also say something like six times eight is equivalent to eight times six. They don't look exactly the same, but they both represent the value of 48. You could also have something like 10 minus two is equivalent to four times two. Once again, they both equal eight, and so they are equivalent to one another. So we also need to ask ourselves, what is a fraction? Because to be able to do all these operations with fractions, we have to know what a fraction actually represents. I feel like a lot of times that gets um, glossed over um, for teachers because they're running out of time or maybe they just don't know how to explain it very well. So I want to make sure you understand what a fraction actually is before we start creating equivalent fractions. So normally teachers start by showing you the circles, the pie charts, um, or circle fractions, and ask you, well, what color is shaded in? And most of you will say, oh, well, two out of three are shaded in. So if you think about this, this is telling me this is my part, okay? Part of the circle is shaded in, and three is my whole amount. There are a total of three pieces. There's a piece here, here, and here. So a fraction tells me the part of a whole that we can have. And they always talk about pizza. Pizza is always a great thing. If I have, I have two slices out of three total slices of pizza. Okay, and we also, most of you know the names of the parts of a fraction. This is called the numerator. It is the part of the fraction. And the number on the bottom is the denominator. And if you think about denominator, I want you to think about, oh, this D right here and divided. How much is it divided up by? Because they're denominating, the, that's where the word denominator comes, they're dividing up the shape that they're trying to find, you're trying to find the fraction of. So remember, a fraction is a part of a whole. So when I teach, I always want to start with a visual. So let's start with two fifths. So there is two of this is shaded out of the whole, and there are five sections. So two fifths. But let's say I wanted to create an equivalent fraction. Two two fifths. Well, to create an equivalent fraction, I would need to split this model. So I'm going to equally split it down the center. So now I've created four pieces that are shaded, and there are a total of 10. So I have four tenths. And what I want you to notice is when I split that, I made it into two separate sections. So I kind of multiplied it by two, and you can see that that's what happens to the numerator and the denominator is I multiplied it by two. So we can say that two fifths is equivalent to four tenths because I didn't actually change the model. I just added a line. I broke it. I made the denominator different by dividing it up into more sections. Okay, let's look at this model. This one, we can see again, there is two that are shaded out of six total, part whole. I want you to pause the video and I want you to think, what would be the equivalent fraction if I, once again, split this in half? I hope you pause it and are back. 
So let's split this. Notice I am splitting the model equally, as equal as I can by freehand. So now if you notice, oh, I have four, but out of 12. So once again, it's multiplying by two because I made two different sections. So the numerator and the denominator must change by the same amount for it to be equivalent. I'm sure some of you are thinking, oh, well, is it always going to change by two? Well, it just depends what you split it into. So let's say I split this time into three sections. And unfortunately, I did not make them very equal, but let's imagine they are equal. So once again, first we started with two this, but then I split it into how many sections? One, two, three. So if I look at this, oh, there are six shaded now out of 15. And because I split it into three sections, it times by three. Let's take a look at some mathematical examples without the visuals, where you are solving for a missing equivalent fraction. Well, for example, let's say I had four tenths, and I wanted to make an equivalent of, let's say, 50. Well, if you think about what we just learned on the last slide, when I split it, it multiplied by the same thing in the numerator and denominator. So if I, this multiplied by five, to get to the 50, then that means I also have to multiply the numerator by 5, which gives me 20. So my new fraction is 20 fifths. But notice, the biggest thing I can say is whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. Whatever you do to the top has to be done to the bottom, or it is not equivalent. And I want you to notice, we are only multiplying because we're splitting it up more. We're not adding. Because I want you to think about this. What if we added to create equivalent fractions? Let's see what would happen. So I want you to visualize a half. Okay, if you visualize a half, think of a rectangle, there's a half, half is shaded in. And let's say we added, let's say I added two. And I add two here. Add, sorry, not multiply. This would give me three-fourths. Well, think about what you know about three-fourths. Three-fourths is greater than a half, so are they equivalent? No, so we cannot add, because look, three-fourths is much closer to a whole. This is a smaller space than this one, and so they're not equivalent. So no, you cannot add to make equivalent fractions. Sometimes when we make equivalent fractions, we are simplifying them. So if I had something, for example, as 20 out of, let's say, 60, you can simplify that. And they say, well, simplify it as far as you can simplify it. So if you think about this, the first thing maybe you think of is, well, I can divide them both by 10 because they both have this zero here. So if I divide 20 by 10, that'll give me 2. And if I divide 60 by 10, oh, that gives me 6. So 2, 6 is equivalent to 20 and 60. And you can see that. You can actually see the 2, 6 in 20 and 60. Right here, here, 2, 6. Okay, well, what if we could make this smaller? What else can go into 2 and 6? Well, you can think, oh, well, 2 can go into them. Divide this by 2. Now we have 1. But we can also, we also have to divide the 6 by 2, which gives me 3. Wow, so 20 sixtieths is the same thing as 1 third. And if you think about that, 20 plus 20 plus 20, there's three of them to get to 60. So one of them is 1 third of 60. I'm sorry this is taking so long. I just feel like there is so many different things to explain when talking about equivalent fractions. So let's do a few practice problems together. So let's change four tenths to be out of 100. Four tenths to be out of 100. Well, if we think about this, this is times 10. 10 times 10 makes 100. 
So then I would have to do the same thing to the top, which would give me 40 hundredths. Okay, I'm gonna give you a problem. I want you to pause the video and try this on your own. What if I had eight tenths? What would that be equivalent to if the denominator is out of 100? Pause the video and then come back when you're done. So hopefully you saw that once again, this is times 10. So I would have to do times 10. So this would be out of 80. Okay, let's do one more. And once again, I want you to try this on your own. What about 1 tenth? What if I need that to be out of 100? What would you do if it was 1 tenth out of 100? Pause the video and then work it out and then unpause. And maybe you already know, so you don't need to unpause. Well, once again, you should see this is times 10 times 10. So that would be 10 one hundredths. So I wanna give you some challenge questions. So I want you to think, well, what if you had six tenths, but I wanted to know what the equivalent was for a thousand. And then I also want you to think about, what if I had 30 one hundredths, but I wanted to know what was equivalent if it was out of 10,000. So I want you to pause the video, try these on your own, and then come back and see how you did. Welcome back if you pause the video. So this you should think, okay, 10 times what? Well, if you think about this, how many zeros do you have? We have three, and over here we only have one. So this would be 10 times 100. So that means I would need to do six times 100. So this would be 600. So on this next one, kind of the same idea. There's two here, two here, we're missing two. So once again, that is times 100. So then 30 times, whoops, 100 is going to give me 3,000. Something also you might think about noticing is that there are two zeros here. There are three here. There's always one difference. There's no zero, one zero. So if you notice here, there are four zeros, three zeros. This one has two zeros and one. So they're always one difference, uh, one zero away from each other. This isn't always true, but this works when we're doing tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands. Great job, you made it through the video. So I am logging off. If you are in my class, go to the next step on your deck toys. And if you're watching this on YouTube, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or want me to make a video for you, um, this was a fourth grade level of equivalent fractions. I know um, in sixth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, you go into much more in-depth equivalent fractions, Please let me know if you need more help with equivalent. I'll be more than happy to create a video for you. Well, have a great day.